Women in Tech event here today. Today we're actually celebrating more than one thing. Um, not no, yes, it's beautiful and sunshiny here in Champaign Urbana, and actually my my uh, plants are starting to grow, but that's not exactly why we're here today. Of course, today is International Women's Day. We'd love for you. One of the things we've done in this event in the past is to uh, drop in the, in the uh, well, really we've done it in person. So we've always said, tell us about a, a woman who is inspiring to you. That could be somebody you know personally or somebody um, who you don't know personally. So feel free to drop that in the chat. Um, and we're also celebrating Champaign-Urbana Ag Tech Week. So it, we will post some information about that as well. Um, of course, if you're not already aware, um, this Wednesday is our Ag Tech Summit um, and we have multiple events going on all week to celebrate. So the, um, the summit is on Wednesday, but we have an, a wonderful opportunity for more networking tomorrow night. And we hope you'll join that as well as a pitch night from our friends at the Illinois Ag Tech Accelerator on Thursday. And I won't read you the whole agenda because we want to get started with our speaker here today. So one of the things I mentioned earlier that networking can be a little bit interesting in our Zoom environment. And um, this was actually International Women's Day celebration was one of our last in-person events that we did last year. Um, and so hopefully someday we'll get back to that again. But what, what we found is there's some silver linings. Um, when we are approaching programming in the research park and at Enterprise Works. And one of those is that we can often uh, get access to speakers that we might not have otherwise considered or even pursued because of their uh, geography. And so noting that um, International Women's Day fell this year on Ag Tech Week, we thought it was important to marry the two. And as I did some research on this, I kept coming across this one name. And so I took uh, on, on a lark and a, on a prayer, I sent a cold email to Amy and said, hey, this is what's happening. Here's who we are. This is what we do. Would you consider coming and talking to us? And lo and behold, she said yes. So cold emails do work sometimes. But um, actually, I think the reality of it is, is that what she is trying to do um, in, in her world and the efforts that she's made really dovetail nicely with the way that we are approaching building an inclusive ag tech hub here in the research park and in Champaign-Urbana more broadly. And I think that what she has to say um, and what, what she has learned from her experiences are all things that we can learn from here. And so that's why we brought um, Amy Wu to speak to us today. Amy Wu is an award-winning ag tech journalist and the producer director of the documentary film From Farms to Incubators. And we're gonna see a tra trailer about the film in just a minute, uh, which has been presented at South by Southwest and Techonomy. Her reporting has appeared uh, in the New York Times, Washington Post, US Today, USA Today, and Time Magazine, you know, some little publications you might have heard of. Um, and probably more exciting um, in my mind is, um, although those are wonderful, as a fellow journalist, amazing accomplishments is that Amy is not just a writer, she is a mover and a shaker and somebody who's a change maker. And just last week, she was named um, by Food Tank as one of 25 inspiring women reshaping the food system, which was um, an inclusive list of women all over the world. Um, and in 2020, she was named on Worth Magazine's Groundbreakers of 50 Women Changing the World. So we are very honored to have you join us today. Amy, I believe we're finding you in New York today. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we'll turn it over to you. And, and we are gonna do a couple things here today just so our viewers know we are going to watch a little uh, trailer of your film and then we're gonna hear a presentation, but we really want this to be interactive. As I mentioned, please feel free to drop um, in the chat your LinkedIn. If you don't wanna send a question out in the chat, uh, you can always just send one to me and I will ask that to Amy too. So again, Amy, take, take it away. Oh, thank you, Laura, for that that excellent introduction. Um, I am in New York. In fact, that's right. I'm in Hudson Valley, New York, which is about 100 miles north of New York City. Um, that's where I've been for the past um, three years. 
And uh, we've got lots of uh, small farms in this area, and it's actually uh, known as one of the top places for you know food and food and farming because the Culinary Institute of America is actually only about 20 minutes away from me. So I moved to where I am because of the food, and uh, and <laughs> the restaurants. I love to I love to eat. I, I know that we have limited time today, so I wanted to say that first of all, I'm really humbled to be here today, and I'm really glad that. Um, Although I, I do prefer in person, I feel very blessed also that this platform allows uh, me to speak, you know, and to connect with people from all over the country and all over the world. So um, thank you to the University of Illinois Research Park for having me here this morning and happy International Women's Day. Um, this month actually marks the fourth anniversary of the documentary from films to from farms to incubators telling the stories of minority women entrepreneurs in ag tech in the Salinas Valley and beyond. Um, it's kind of amazing that it's been four years because time goes by very, very quickly. I am really happy that we're going to play the trailer because the film is a really important part of from farms to incubators, the initiative. It highlights women entrepreneurs in ag tech who have created innovations to solve some of the biggest problems that growers face today, from severe labor shortage to the loss of farmable land. And it's really an exciting look at how women are women, women entrepreneurs are revolutionizing agriculture through uh, through high tech. You know, these are drones, artificial intelligence sophisticated soil sensors, data analytics, blockchain and robotics, but I'm probably speaking to an audience where you could teach me a lot more about that as well. I bet there's a lot of uh, women out there and who are in, in the area of STEM. So I'm excited to connect with all of you actually. So in 2016, as a journalist assigned, I was assigned as a reporter for a local paper in the Salinas Valley. And it's a $9 billion uh, ag industry there. And I noticed there were not a lot of women leaders in the ag, ag space in general. So women, especially in decision-making positions. And there certainly weren't a lot of women who look like me. You know, at the same time, the local government in uh, Salinas had tagged ag tech, then a really kind of a fledgling sector. Not a lot of people knew about ag tech and you could walk around and be like ag tech and people would be like, in general, be like, what is that? They really saw it as a way to boost the local economy. So an ag tech accelerator called the Western Growers Center for Innovation and Technology launched at the end of 2015. And there were a handful of ag tech startups at the time, which now has become like more than 50. But I started to look around and I asked a question. I asked, do you know of any minority women entrepreneurs in ag tech? And at first I received a lot of silence and blank stares but then through word of mouth, I identified a handful of women. And then since then, dozens and dozens of women and, and their amazing stories. So this film, the trailer you're about to see was first released in 2017, and it was updated in 2018, thanks to grants from the International Center for Journalists and the International Women's Media Foundation. So uh, after the trailer is screened, I will share some exciting developments on where From Farms to Incubators is today. So I was going to say, take it away. All right. I always wanted to have a farm because food is very cultural for me. My family's from the Philippines. I'm a first generation American. That was the way I knew how to express my love. I came here from Vietnam as a refugee. And witnessing the cost of malnutrition, I decided I looked for a solution. My parents are immigrants and they, uh, they were field workers when they came to the U.S. My grandfather was a farmer board. He had his own farm that he fed his family with. When you have a diverse group of people, decision making is more robust and you get better outcomes, better creativity because you have different perspectives. I think maybe you just get used to being a minority and you stop thinking about it after a while. Everyone's a, an outsider in their own way, I think. Once you're able to focus on the successes and the message that you want to get out there, um, then the conversation becomes a lot easier. In America, less than 1% of the population actually farms anymore. So we have a very honestly precarious situation where we have an aging population of farmers and not very many people who are doing it. 
And it's very, very important that we make this sustainable. So we are putting technology to work to solve that problem. The story started more than five years ago when Diane and I met. Both of us were very passionate about the way in which we can arm community members with, uh, with a way to stay one step ahead of disease. We've uh, built a really simple soil test for growers and farmers to be able to look at the biology of their soil. The soil biology plays a huge role in yield and crop health, uh, soil health and sustainability at least three times a week, you know, we're out in the fields in Salinas. Getting in that feedback uh, directly from our customer base, the growers, who are in desperate need of this technology. So we are making our technology fit the needs of the growers. So our company, we do equipment tracking, um, timekeeping, and field scouting. It's a mobile app, so all the data collection is just through your smartphone. Would you change anything right now as it is? Yeah, but like the same structure is just like... Trying to implement that software and telling them we can give them something that works that's better. They've also had other companies come in and say that, but a lot of times it's been companies from Silicon Valley. They come in from a different perspective. And so what makes us unique is um, knowing the ag side and knowing their processes. Yeah. We'll break it. <laughs> you guys will make it better. I mean, A deficiency and disorders are just easy to, to solve, but it's still so prevalent. When I was little in Saigon, my mother, she would get the food and dye the, the rice with it. And the color of it is so strikingly red. I just have the hunt that this is, the, the food was really rich. Red melon, the food to me that stand out. I came up with a way so that the farmers can then use whatever they have to make the oil and then keep that oil in their household. It's important that the field be diversified and that women be at the table. Women don't get treated well unless there are enough. There's a critical mass. My daughter is 10 years old. She asks me, what is it that you're doing? And when I share that with her, she has this spark in her eye that, wow, I didn't know that's how you grew strawberries. Once the spark is there, they will find most innovative ways to solve things. So thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Kathy and Laura, for playing that trailer. Um, I always get excited when I see, when I see it again. Um, from Farms to Incubators, I want to talk a little bit about the background of the initiative and then where we are today with this. Um, from Farms to Incubators, the documentary, I think, is a really good example of new opportunities within ag tech. It uses storytelling, whether that be documentary, video, still photography, written word, or social media, to tell the stories of women innovators and entrepreneurs in this growing field of ag tech. So ag and tech remain two sectors that are heavily male dominated. And yet I feel like challenges, all challenges bring opportunity. Ag tech is a win-win. It not only uses innovation to solve some of the biggest challenges that growers face, a lot of it coming from climate change, but it opens opportunities for a new generation of women who I call them trailblazers. So in researching, women over the past five years and in talking to dozens and dozens of them, despite their diverse backgrounds and unique stories, they share a couple of commonalities. And I'm gonna name a couple of the commonalities that I found among these, these amazing women. So a passion for changing the world for the better through their technology, a passion to solve big problems with impact, a desire to give back and create a community of like-minded people, a desire to get away from corporate politics to a more merit-based environment and to be able to better execute their vision, a passion for creating something new and innovative that others have not done so or been able to do. Simply put, they have taken the ball and they run with it. So what now and what next? Um, since 2016, From Farms to Incubators has grown from a series of stories that originally ran in USA Today and a documentary that has now screened at over 50 different venues. 
into an initiative that combines storytelling and advocacy. So the handful of women I, I found originally are now in the dozens upon dozens. And every week what I found was that somebody would be forwarding me an email or calling me and asking me, have you seen this woman? Have you interviewed her? Have you heard of her? So in 2018, I started working on a book. I had not planned on a book before actually. And I had not done a book before, but I said, what am I gonna do with all these dozens upon dozens of inspiring stories of women leaders in ag tech? So in April, on April 20th, actually uh, two days before Earth Day, uh, the book From Farms to Incubators, Women Innovators Revolutionizing How Our Food is Grown will be officially launched and in print. It includes over 24 profiles of women and their stories that span the US and extend internationally. I get really excited every time I talk about this. It's been a, a bit of a climb, like a climb up Everest, which I haven't done before, by the way. <laughs> so the book presents, I think, inspiring case studies of how women entrepreneurs from, they come from all cultures and ethnic backgrounds are leading the ag tech revolution. Um, and each of her, each of the women tells her own story, her own personal story, where she came from, uh, her parents, her grandparents, what inspired some of them to move from one woman I, I recall moved from uh, New York to California just to pursue this dream of launching her company. Um, so what is my view of the future when it comes to ag tech and women in ag tech? I am optimistic and hopeful for both the sector and seeing more women in the sector. Back in 2016, I attended ag conferences and ag tech conferences, both in Salinas Valley and Silicon Valley and there was a skepticism among many growers when it came to ag tech. They questioned the effectiveness of everything from the sensors to the robots to the automation in the same air that someone might allude to maybe snake oil. But progressively since then, growers have not only become more open to the idea of new innovation, but began seeking innovation out. And then by 2020, with the pandemic, it became clear that due to the fast spread I mean, in part due to the fast spread and furious changes of the world, that adopting and adapting to innovation would be a necessity if farms are not only to survive, but to thrive. As certain sectors have sadly faltered during COVID-19, the investment in ag tech has actually seemed to pick up steam, not just in the US, but globally. There were some high profile investments. One example, May 2020, Appeal Sciences, a Santa Barbara, California based company that's developing tech to extend the freshness of produce, raised 250 million with a couple of celebrity investors as well, Oprah Winfrey and Katy Perry. So I feel like the opportunities are endless as innovation and ag become increasingly intertwined. And yet at the same time, there's a lot of work to be done because everywhere we look, I feel like gender inequity in the distribution of opportunities and resources is still painfully obvious. Looking at the 10 largest agri-food tech financings in 2020, 100% of the founders of these 10 companies are men. And of the 20 top financings, just two are known to have women co-founders. And that comes from Ag Funder most recently. So this begs a number of questions. How many women chair industry conferences or sit on the boards of ag or ag tech companies? How many women our principles at venture capital or investment firms when it comes to this sector. So where to next as we move into 2021? In summary, I strongly believe in the power of storytelling and helping create a domino effect that begins with discussions to real changes in leadership and sometimes policy. I think the journey that involves documenting the stories of women in ag tech has taught me there is a great power to telling people's stories by share, sharing their stories and highlighting those stories, we give them a voice, we uplift new voices, and we fill in gaps that will hopefully someday be history. I, will, I believe too, finally, in the power of numbers. And I wanna share one example before wrapping up and going into the question and answer section. So recently, a group of women leaders in ag tech and I partnered to launch a searchable directory of women working in ag tech. So we organically learned through chit chat and conversation that we had each had our own list and we've been keeping our own list for several years. 
And then we thought, why not combine forces and share out one big directory that others can share out and add to? So we launched the list and made it so that anyone can embed the directory on their website and share it out. We made it so that everyone who has a woman leader or a woman working in ag tech in mind can, can actually add to the list. And we hope that the directory, directory will eventually reach more growers, investors, journalists, business leaders, and policymakers. And we hope that people will add to it. So the question now is what can we do together? And the answer that I have is plenty. And I think that change indeed takes a village. So I wanna thank you, uh, thank Laura, Kathy, and uh, the Research Park for allowing me to share my story and to connect with you. And if you're interested in learning more about From Farms to Incubators and receiving the What Can I Do Action list, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at amy at farms to incubators.com. So I'm really looking forward to the interactive part of this uh, program. And I'd love to, to uh, move forward into the questions and answers and conversation. Thank you, Amy. So I haven't seen any questions, but of course I have a whole list of my own. So okay. um, my first question to you is, you mentioned uh, the importance of telling stories and are there any stories that you, uh, that particularly touched you or that you repeat more often than others that you might share with us? Of course, there were a few of the people who were in the film that we just saw that were highlighted. So it might be one of them, but it might be somebody else. That's a, that's a really excellent question. Um, there have been, each story is obviously unique to me, but um, there's, a, there's several that, that I find myself just that um, hit home to me. And one is uh, the story of Jessica Gonzalez, who started out, uh, she was in the film, um, she's a young Mexican American woman, and she was working at Heavy Connect, which is an ag tech startup in the Salinas Valley at the time and she was one of the co-founders and CTOs. And um, at first I was like looking at her like, wow, she looks like she's in college, but she was, she's quite a powerhouse actually. She comes from um, a family of immigrants. Her parents worked in the fields as well in, in Salinas originally from Mexico. She comes from a family of 10 um, siblings, brothers and sisters, and she's one of the youngest. And she really was rising up, I would say, in the in this ag tech sector. And then her father got ill, became ill with uh, cancer, and she had she had to leave and resign from that position and move back to her roots in Merced, California. But what was really inspiring about her story, my, the, her story, is that she took her tech savvy and skills and everything and brought it back to the family farm to help run her father's farm. And also, she ended up launching another couple of uh, companies that um, they're not really entirely related to ag tech, but they're actually quite uh, successful in the ag area. So I feel like she really wants to make a difference in her community and hire more uh, women locally and, and, and contribute to the area of Merced. So that's like one of the inspiring stories that I really, really like. Yeah. So you talked a little bit about, of course, the most recent ag funder data and the data around just funding in general. Um, you know, this is something, of course, being in the Midwest that we hear about quite a bit is, you know, the Midwest is a VC desert, which is not actually true, but certainly lags behind, uh, you know, our coastal um, friends. So knowing that and knowing what you know about our uh, about our um, ecosystem, what do you think that we can do to encourage more investment uh, in, in ag tech, but in specifically in, in, in a very you know, narrow niche area of ag tech with women founders? So, uh, so Laura, I was gonna mention that I, I am hoping for a sequel <laughs> of the book because um, a big part of this project had started in Cal started out in California, but there are so many, I mean, the Midwest is tremendous in agriculture, you know, especially when it comes to um, crops like wheat, soybeans, um, and so forth. So I actually have a few women from the Midwest in the book, but, um, and they're pretty, they're pretty awesome. But I would say in general that, okay, back to the ag funder um, data that came out, um, so how can one grow, you know, change that essentially, you know, it's, it's a really low number. Um, 
I think it's it's challenging actually, and um, this is a theme that's come up again and again in each story that it's been challenging to get funding, especially through traditional VC realm um, for a lot of the startups in in this sector. So um, no immediate answers, except there are a couple of avenues. One is I think in the time I have started the research, there's been more accelerators um, and incubators that have given women an opportunity, given really every a lot of folks who want to get into the field an opportunity to get in and to connect with growers in some cases and to also get funding. Um, I do know that there are some accelerators now that are specifically um, looking for women and also um, women of color also. So um, there's a resource list that um, is also coming out with a directory that includes some of those. Um, I'd also say there are ever other avenues of funding um, as well beyond venture capital firms. Um, some of them, the women that I've talked to have gone through grants actually like science foundation grants and government grants because um, ag tech is not only of interest, I think, to the um, traditional investor, uh, you know, but also to government as well, I feel, and universities. There's lots of opportunities for collaboration and partnership um, in this area. So um, I think that there's different avenues of, uh, of funding and also finally to have women um, to consider who's sitting on the board, I think, of, of, of certain of companies um, and really taking a step back, you know, for companies and, and taking a look at our different voices being represented um, on the boards, whether they be board of directors or advisory um, boards as well. So there's tons of opportunity there, yeah. So we know that mentorship is really important. And when you have an industry that may have had many um, or that has been somewhat limited to, to folks, um, that may be a limiting factor as well. But um, I did want to point out just a few folks. I do see um, some of our um, some of our community here that is some great examples of what you're talking about. So I see Indu here. Is, uh, and she introduced herself earlier, Bianca, who's working on um, as, as a finishing out her PhD at the University of Illinois and continues to work on her startup and will be talking tomorrow night at our Ag Tech Networking event. Um, Angela Green Miller, who I'm not sure if she was able to join us today, but she is, oh, there she is. I mean, you guys just popping on as I talk about you. So just wanted to make sure um, I highlight you all as um, some of some of the uh, people in our community who are um, forging this path forward and interestingly in very different ways. So uh, working with, an, you know, in animal health, working with the intersection of plants and, or plants and human health. So um, anyway, but we have been lucky to have a lot of great mentors um, in our community who've been willing to share their time as well as industry partners. I'm curious, who have you found in your, um, in your uh, experience that may be serving that mentorship role um, for the, these minority uh, women entrepreneurs in ag tech that maybe we can learn some of their secrets or maybe even get some introductions to them? Well, mentorship is, is truly critical, you know, uh, and um, I, in fact, a lot of the stories came from, in the beginning, came from a woman who, uh, she calls herself a bit of like the grandmother <laughs> <laughs> of that tech simply because I think she's one of the uh, she may be one of the older women too you know it's interesting that a lot of the women that are that I identified are women who have who in the beginning happened to be younger a lot of them were in their 20s or uh, maybe early 30s and they would all say um, we we didn't know where to turn it is, there's no mentor mentors but this woman that I talked to Pam Marone she actually um, serves as an unofficial mentor to like a lot of women who are interested in ag bio and ag tech. So mentorship means like, you know, when, when women call her up on the phone and email her and ask her questions, um, say, can you connect us with X, Y, and Z? She is very open. She, uh, she won't say no. She'll, she'll basically make time to answer questions and to also connect. So, um, the short answer is that there isn't an official mentorship uh, channel, I think, so far in ag tech and ag bio. A lot of it is up to women themselves to just reach out to um, 
women who they see speaking at conferences or could be in the uh, pre-COVID days at the cocktail hour, um, exchanging business cards. I feel like I'm talking about another world, <laughs> um, you know, hors d'oeuvres and all that. So in other words, like really connecting and getting to exchange that information and then follow up with it. But in this, in the new world of like, maybe might be in the future hybrid, there's also a ton of opportunities like women in agribusiness is one organization that has, I think, done an excellent job to connect women who are interested in this, in the field. Um, and not only women who are who have already reached management level, but college students and even younger, any person, anybody who wants to just get to know the sector better. Um, they have meetups, which I think is great, more casual groups, smaller breakout groups where people can truly um, connect with each other. So I see like a real opportunity, you know, within the organizations out there. Um, I know in California, they have the California agriculture, women in agriculture, which they have chapters like all over, mm -hmm. all over the state. And I'm sure in Illinois, there's something as well. So I, I think there's an endless amount of opportunity to connect actually you now. And it's important. And it, yes. And, and if any of you out there would like to ask a question of Amy, feel free to either pop it in the chat or if you want to go off mute. Uh, oh, I see, I see a question. So from Catherine Rayberg, love that you have helped to demystify that ag is not just men and tractors. Have you done any work with the FFA to inspire young women to pursue careers in ag tech? Um, I would love to uh, collaborate or partner or work in uh, with the FFA. I mean, I think the um, FFA and, and 4-H and organizations uh, as such there's a tremendous amount of opportunity to reach younger women. I mean, when I say younger women, it's high school, but even younger, K to, K to 12, to bring, like, I'll give one example. I think it'd be awesome to have some of these women speak to elementary school <laughs> students and to um, tell them like a bit about what, like in my day, it was career day. It was kind of like, what are your, you know, your uh, classmates' parents doing and how did they get into it? But I think all of the women in, that I've talked to are really wanting to give back and really wanting to share their stories with younger women. They're, they're eager to mentor. There's just a lack of currently a bridge sometimes or a place where people, a portal or something where people can go to be like, how can I sign up to be like a mentor or a mentee in this field? But I have gotten dozens upon dozens of emails from women from all different fields, you know, um, one woman, her background was completely in mathematics. And she said, I really, really want to get like, get into this field, but I have no background in agriculture. Like, do you think growers or ag would be interested in me? And it's like, yes, <laughs> they need really good mathematicians. Um, another interesting thing is that there's a lot of intersections with, uh, I mentioned the ag organizations, but the society of women on engineers, for example, I think is another really good organization. Um, in fact, a, a, a woman, uh, at it, her name is Connie Bowen. She's the head of Ag Launch, which is an accelerator. Um, she's actually an engineer by, her degree is in engineering as an undergrad. So um, they have a conference every year. This year it's in October, actually. And I think it might be in St. Louis anyway. But um, so she was just like, well, at all the conferences that I think that I've ever been to, there's never been mention of Ag actually at any of the engineering conferences. So there's an opportunity to kind of bridge the two and, and say, what are uh, the job and skills that are needed? And we, we need engineers as well, yeah. yeah. And we know Connie, she's actually served as a panelist at our um, Ag Tech Summit previously. I think that was in, not that I memorized the agenda, but I think that was 2019, but I know she's attended too. And so yeah, we oftentimes great. engage with our friends in St. Louis. So great mention there. Um, and yeah, she's definitely a leader. So we, we did have a question from Angela about posting some of the resources and we'll definitely grab those as we can. Um, women in agribusiness. And I, I know that I've intersected a little bit with women in agriculture, but you're right. I think that this, uh, the intersection of ag and tech is still seen um, as sometimes very highly ag or very highly tech. And so actually bringing the two together is something that I know happens, um, thankfully, frequently here on our campus. 
Um, and so that's one of the reasons why I believe that our campus has and our community has um, advanced to be um, the sector that it is today. Of course, we still have work to do, but one example would be our in the College of Engineering, the, the College of or the department is straddles the, the College of Engineering our ag engineering straddles both engineering as well as the ag. Uh, so, um, so yes, yeah, so we see another one who's I love. I'm an engineer and would love to connect with ag. So, um, continue to to be part of it. And and Zoli, I hope you'll be part of our summit on on uh, Wednesday and Tuesday night as well as the networking event. And you'll see some of the how these intersections have have come to light. So. Um, Another question for you, Amy, is a little bit more personal to you. I, I think that you are developing into a, an ag tech mentor. So are people looking to you to help tell their stories and potentially grow their startups through your expertise and knowledge? And are you joining any, uh, any companies or any boards or considered that? Um, so, when this project started five years ago, uh, the the funny, the interesting thing is, like for for journalists, and I'm a professionally trained journalist. Most most of the time, we do a story and then we move on. Like I'm I'm actually boiling it down to that, but it is a lot like that. So I never um, anticipated that this project would just kind of grow its own legs, and it's been it's been a really amazing uh, journey. And um, I said I I mentioned this, but I. I'm a storyteller definitely first, but it's morphed into that I now um, feel like there's advocacy certainly in it and in also helping um, helping startups, especially women, uh, women led startups tell their story. Now, um, it's interesting, I have had now some some companies uh, that are especially women led come to me and say, um, we need a little bit of help here, you know, uh, tell us a bit about how we can tell our stories. Um, to the, you know, to investors or to the media and so forth. And I guess I would say this is that I, I first and foremost see myself still as the storyteller. And I feel like there's, there's real importance to that, um, to kind of keeping that um, level of presenting the story and saying, this is this, and then sort of leaving people to decide, well, what next from there? But I would also say that I would love at some to share my, you know, my wisdoms of how one can connect with the media more because I'm hearing it from journalists too, that like I want to more journalists now want to write about food and farming. I never thought that would necessarily happen in my career because everybody wanted to cover like X, Y, and Z or be a foreign correspondent. <laughs> um, but now I'm I'm hearing that my gosh, I really want to get into um, writing about food and farming. How do I get into this? Like, what stories can I tell? And I'm sitting here with my, like, almost like a Rolodex. Um, like, oh, I have a woman that you can totally connect with. So increasingly, I feel like the role that I have is one as a, of a connector and connecting uh, journalists, connecting investors, connecting people who call up and say, I'm looking for, um, can I, I'm doing a story about ag tech. Is there... Are there a few interesting people that I can talk to? And where change comes is that I once had a couple of journalists call me up and say, okay, I'm, I see your name like in a lot of places, so I need your help. Uh, we need to like get a couple of quotes from, um, from a couple of guys in ag tech. And I was like, guys, <laughs> you just want guys in ag tech? Or I also have like some, you know, I have both. I have men, but I also have like, these amazing women, you know, in fact. So I think, um, it come, you know, I feel like I'm making a difference when I do something like that. And I feel like with the searchable directory, um, a lot of the reason why I was pushing for it and I was like, we have to get it just out there. It doesn't matter. Like we doesn't have to be beautiful. We just have to get it out there was because um, I and also the other women who joined in this really wanted to have a place where, where folks could just like go to a directory and then search themselves and find, find women that they could connect. So you mentioned connecting, and so some people who may have read your bio may have thought, "Why are we listening to a woman who's going to talk about the ag, uh, the ag tech, um, what's happening in California?" But I do think that everything you've said today has really been, um, you know, things that we can learn from, regardless of our geography. But are there any ways that we could connect with some of the uh, folks that you have talked to and um, broaden our networks a little bit? 
Um, I, I would I would love that. I really welcome and also for, for folks in different places like so a lot of the women have that in this book have some connection to California. But since then, because the book actually a lot of the research ended in mid 2020, I've been collecting new a whole new list of um, women all over the world. You know, there are women in Taiwan, you know, China, India, um, Tel Aviv, you know, I'm just like listing different different folks here. So and I, again and again, I hear, um, I want to, I want to talk to this other woman. Like, can you just like, so absolutely. Yes. I enjoy being a connector. I actually get a thrill out of like when, when, you know, the, the both sides meet and there's something that can good that can come out. of it. So I'd be more than happy to make connections. So speaking of making connections, Bianca, um, as I mentioned, Bianca Bailey is a, a student entrepreneur, though she's a, a grown up in my opinion. She's <laughs> uh, finishing out her PhD and um, will be presenting about her startup tomorrow night at our networking event, but she wanted to ask you a question. Hi, Amy. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Hope you can hear me. Um, I guess my question is, uh, while interviewing uh, such wonderful uh, women in agriculture, what were some of the barriers or common uh, barriers that they um, sort of vocalize uh, as far as when it comes to funding and resources? And um, I guess, number two, I wanna plug uh, agricultural and biological engineering. There's a, a conference that does happen. We don't really get a lot of publicity, but um, it's called ASABE. And it's um, Ag Agricultural Society of Biological um, Engineers, <laughs> ASAB. And um, I'm actually a president of the, the Honor Society in Agriculture that's connected to um, that conference. And we'll, it'll be virtual this year over the summer. And I can send you more details on that. But um, typically, it's an international conference. Uh, and it's in person. <clears throat> uh, so I just wanted to plug that in. We don't get a lot, ag and bio doesn't get a lot of light on. <laughs> there, thanks, Dr. Green. <laughs> um, and I guess, uh, <clears throat> lastly, um, what can uh, young entrepreneurs, uh, young women entrepreneurs do to um, secure uh, investment funding? Are there strategic ways that we must approach uh, the table compared to our male counterparts. Well, first of all, congratulations on, and that's awesome, you're pitching tomorrow. And I definitely want to, or presenting, I definitely want to look into the organization of the ASABE. And um, I would agree with you, there's, we need more organizations as such. So I'm excited about that resource that you shared. Um, so I'm going to work my way backwards with the question because you asked some really excellent ones. So um, younger women in, in the space of ag tech, ag bio, who are interested in getting, who want to get, who need funding, basically, in order to grow their companies. Um, so we talked a little bit about mentorship and I think, and, and networking and connecting. And I still think there's a lot of value in that. And it mm -hmm. takes a lot of work, like strategic work to actually do that, to identify people that you want to um, connect with. Um, you know, I've actually met people who have connected with people through LinkedIn as well. And um, it's amazing, like what can come out of LinkedIn too. I, mean, <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, but also I've, I've been, I've had some really amazing conversations with some, some uh, startup companies who've reached out through that there. Um, I would also really encourage, um, and this goes back to the resources list, um, which is also on the what can I do list. But um, I would say that there, there is a growing number of, of uh, accelerator incubator or programs that really want to cultivate um, entrepreneurs who are in this space. And if you have a good product and you have a good innovation and a good team, I think what it comes down to is they're really looking for, they are focused obviously very much on the product and the innovation, but they would love to diversify, you know, to have the space more diverse, diverse too. So I think the timing is really right. Like I mentioned that there, are, there were, ag tech was actually one of the sectors that um, food and food sector actually got a lot more investment 
during this period. And I'm not entirely surprised given that during the pandemic, all of us have been to some extent um, impacted by some form of like maybe, you know, food access or, you know, or so forth. It leads at least people thinking, where does my food come from? How is it grown? Even people in big cities. So um, I would go to the Excel, you know, that list of resources. And then, and there are a few that specifically are looking for women. Um, I would also say, look out to build a strong team is important mm -hmm. um, from the very beginning um, because one person cannot do it all alone. Although like in the beginning, it might seem that way, like, oh my gosh, I can do it all. <laughs> and then um, I can say even for myself, um, you know, when I, in the beginning, I was like, okay, this is a few stories like I can handle. And now increasingly, like I'm bringing, I brought in for this project, I brought in videographers, I brought in uh, cinematographers, I brought in photographers, like this, the book itself was actually a collection, I'm using it as an example, but this book was a collection of partnerships with all different kind of people, not only the women who shared their stories, but like artists, um, photographers, um, people who contributed. So it takes a team. So I would say start, my advice would be to start building your roster, like whatever your area of interest is, and your technology or innovation, start thinking about who um, would I like to have conversations with and get to know better. And I think from there, sometimes it, you might be surprised um, with who who's connecting with who, you know, and so forth. Yeah, that would be um, that would be some of my advice. Thank you. Anyway, um, about your work. <laughs> my my last question is. Um, if we have literature uh, that is about um, agriculture and we want to put it on the spotlight, for example, I published a, um, a chapter in a book about women in water and agriculture in East Africa, um, and it was published with uh, Dr. Asada Zarai, who was the diversity inclusion um, director at uh, the University of Illinois, but she's now at the University of Mexico. But um, I think that would be a great book. I can send you the Amazon link there to sell it on Amazon. Oh, that would be that would be great. I I would love I would love the IP link here. Yeah, there's opportunities. The more that we um, that we share out, you know, with like if you have articles, others have articles. I feel like my the big picture is that I think we need to just share it out. You know, we need to get it out. It's better than just keeping it, um, keeping it there. Like I keep going back to this list, but it's been sitting. It's amazing how people like have great content and material, <laughs> and it can just sit there um, and and not consciously, but it's like, okay, this is what I have, and I thought everybody else knew about it, or, and then you find that wow, like you know, it, it's not out there. So I think that um, plenty of opportunity, and the and you know, there's lots of opportunity to get, to get it out and. The wonderful thing about the world we live in now is like when you, if you put it out, you could be hearing from investors or women in ag tech or, you know, journalists from all, all over the world who are interested. Yeah. So as our, as our time gets short, Amy, I, I want you to look into your crystal ball and, uh, um, you know, we all, of course, I think, I feel like my crystal ball failed miserably in the last year, but um, regarding women in ag tech and just what is your vision and where do you see, you know, I don't want to, you know, not to be too artificial or trite, but you see this, uh, um, this accelerating what the work that you're doing, but just the, the, you know, the opportunities for women in ag tech in the next, you know, three, five, seven years. Well, wow, three, five, seven years. Um, so my crystal ball is uh, is definitely charged up. <laughs> so I I would say while the um, the long term is hard to predict sometimes, but I would say based off of what I see and based off of what I've seen, it's catching it's the momentum is actually uh, getting faster and faster. There are more women in the space. There are more of uh, ag tech. Um, companies, there are more growers. Most critical is that growers are open to using different kinds of innovation now, whether that be collecting data, whether that be uh, sensors in the field. I didn't see that certainly uh, four or five years ago. There was a lot more of kind of the silence, you know, when you would go to like an ag tech conference and 
the big struggle for ag tech companies back then was like, how can I even just get in a, get on a farm basically? <laughs> um, so I feel like the wave has not yet come, has not yet arrived, the big wave, but I actually think it is coming. Um, so I think the next um, two to three years is a really critical time. And for women, especially who want to see more women in this space, who want to connect with women, I think we, there's a lot of opportunity to collaborate and to partner together and to find ways to move it forward. Um, and, and ultimately, I think it's a win-win for, um, for, for, for farmers, for the consumer, for uh, hopefully the climate as well, for entrepreneurs, for just the big story of like women, you know, inspiring women. And you don't necessarily have to even be in this ag space to, to hear some of the stories and to be like, wow. So sometimes just passion and just kind of pushing through can make a big difference. Well, thank you so much, Amy. I think we will we will um, close out our fine our presentation here today. Happy International Women's Day to you, and to all those you know. Hopefully, who you work with. We're really excited about seeing your book now, especially that we know that some of our friends or colleagues from around the Midwest are going to make an appearance in it. So, just can you give us a little bit, just a reminder about the book will be published in April. Absolutely. The book will be published on April 20th, um, um, and which is around the corner. It's available now. And the exciting thing that I'm, I'm actually really excited about is that Ms. Ma Ms. Magazine is going to be publishing um, some excerpts around Earth Day also. And um, like I said, I, I'm, uh, I'm very excited about this because I think that, like I said, even if you're not uh, wanting to specifically work in ag, you can read these stories and you, they can really translate to a bigger audience. So I hope to um, hope to share more. And if you want to get the latest updates or maybe join the book launch party, <laughs> send me an email. Great. Well, thank you so much. And to all of you who've joined us, um, thank you so much for joining us for International Women's Day for our uh, Champaign-Urbana Ag Tech Week kickoff event. Um, we do hope you'll join us for Ag Tech Summit Networking, as well as, of course, our big day on Wednesday. Um, one of our things, we do have a growers panel every year at our summit, Amy. So this has been actually one of the most popular parts of the summit. So um, so yes, growers are integral to our ecosystem. And thankfully, we're, we are lucky to be surrounded by them. So um, and in a wide variety, not just, you know, people just assume it's all row crops, but lots of different types of growers and producers that are in our community. So we are grateful to all of them. So yes, as uh, all the registrants will receive um, a link to the recording of today. And we also have some other um, information that we'll be sending to you. Um, we will be posting this on the Research Park YouTube channel in the next few weeks, um, but uh, we just really want to remind everyone to reach out, tell your stories, um, and together I think we're making a difference to grow the ag tech community um, and to be more inclusive as well. So thank you so much. Oh, Jure is gonna get um, the book, a free book one. That's a very apropos. So um, congrats, Jure. So any final remarks, Kathy or Amy? Thank you everyone for attending. Thank you for, have, thank you for having me. Thank Absolutely. you so much. I, I signed up for the networking events. So I look forward to joining the summit. Yeah. Oh, great. Take care everyone. Have a great day.